the more I did the research and more followers that are higher education than me in biochem, they did the metabolic rate of a rat for me. They found it to be, I think, around 32 mg, which is really fucking close to where people are dosing it, which is 20 mg to 30 mg a day, right? What is up everyone, it's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907 in the description below. Keep on code Russo. Let's not forget about the ASMR spritz, intelligent elf and carbon coupon code Russo. And check out the Black Friday drop for Young LA. Andrew and Austin will be making some creative reels for you to see some of the pieces. Today, I'm going to be reacting to ASAP Science, the first exercise pill, and it's unbelievable. Shout out to Greg Doucette, who gave me the topic. I have never would have honestly checked this channel. And this is one of those crazy channels that has 10.3 million subscribers. I wanna look at these videos real quick. So a new show about using science for self-reliance by YouTube originals. So these guys have a contract with YouTube. So I always find these ones pretty, pretty interesting that they get to make a video on a research chemical that I have been shadow banned and deleted over multiple times, but it's okay for them to do it they're um because they're with youtube originals they've paid the piper or whatever so i'm going to watch this with a little bit of animosity right i want to see how they present carterine and if they overplay the benefits and not the consequences of carterine because just to go into what just recently happened in my dm box at russo lifts is someone was using carterine and completely fucked up their thyroid their metabolic rate was completely fucked up and they were using 20 mega a day 20 mega day is widely touted around we know that the half-life could be potentially longer thus they could be doing more into the cancer range and overall it's sunshine and rainbows on paper around the efficacious dosage of one to five milligrams a day in my opinion right 10 being pretty you're pushing it 15s pushing it 20 mig you're in the bodybuilder performance enhancing dosages and then i've had people in the dm box professional fighters right kickboxers they love this shit because they never run out of gas and they go up to 40 mega a day like those lightweight boxers that are all about firing combos endlessly yes enhanced athlete in the original og days we had a professional boxer doing extreme dosages so carterine has been around forever it's being swept under the rug by anyone who mentions it besides asap science which is on youtube originals i have nothing against these creators i'm just saying why is there always this caveat to a creator like this and a creator like me. Andrew edits my penis videos when we react to a female doctor giving males advice on sexual health, which is blatantly band-aiding their egos, right? It's not keeping them black-pilled in reality. She gets millions of subscribers. I can't even get to 50K. So I like to point out this hypocrisy. And like I said, Greg Doucet found this video. I didn't find this video and I'm excited to react to it because I've used Carterine for over five years. More than 100,000 papers have been published connecting exercise to health, and yet 80% of Americans don't get the recommended 150 minutes of exercise each week. In fact, billions of people worldwide are considered physical. So overall, I'm not talking shit about the way these videos are made. I love the artistic drawing. Like I said, I've hired two creatives. I think creatives are awesome and that this channel is gonna get more subscribers than some boring ass motherfucker like me. I'm just more concerned about how carterine is presented in this video. Complete inactive. But what if I told you science could change that with a pill? Meet Couch Potato Mouse and Lance Armstrong Mouse. Both are being fed the same Western diet, which is mostly high fat and high sugar, tastes kind of like cookie dough, and they're both raised under the exact same conditions. They live in the same setup and are both extremely 
extremely limited in how much exercise they are allowed. And yet, scientists have recently found a way to keep Lance Armstrong Mouse lean and fit with a perfectly healthy shiny coat, without exercise or the need to move a muscle. A simple daily dose of a drug has effectively given Lance Armstrong Mouse the benefits of exercise. This is real and happening at the Salk Institute in San Diego. The drug is called GW. So right off the bat, they are keeping it super base, which I enjoy in the science, right? So there have been rat studies going on for ever about cartery. Always been in rat studies. They haven't really done human trials to what I believe to. So rats have a different metabolic rate. They break down drugs metabolically different than us, right? You do the calculation. It leans it towards everyone's dosing the carterine on the underground too aggressively when in accordance with the cancer study. So I really want to see if this is brought up in this video around GW501516. W501516 or just 516 for short. And when Given to healthy mice that are allowed to exercise, it increased their endurance by 75% after only four weeks, shrank their body fat, reduced insulin resistance, and shifted muscle composition ratio to slow twitch fibers. And it's not right. So this is a gene switcher, and you're gonna switch your fast twitch to slow twitch fibers. I've talked about in multiple videos on this channel that Andrew has edited on how carterine makes you weaker, and it's really again used in high endurance sports activities. It's a game changer, but if you're trying to have fast twitch power, carterine comes with a trade-off, in my opinion. And I personally notice, like I've been an elite long distance runner in my past. I notice that my legs start to switch. Not the only drug like this. But before we can fully understand the mechanisms and whether you should or would even want to take these drugs, we first have to understand exercise a little more. The benefits of exercise have been known for centuries, with the first evidence of organized exercise for health occurring in China in 2500 BCE. Between then and now, different cultures have had different beliefs about physical movement, but it wasn't until the 1940s and 50s that scientists in the West really became obsessed with the benefits of exercise. And it all started because of the famous Red Decker buses in London, England. No joke. In fact, they provided the first ever quantitative systematic medical study of exercise. You see, in the 1940s, medical professionals began realizing that rates of heart attack were way up and suspected it may be due to modern inactivity. Turns out these double decker buses were the perfect environment to test their hypothesis. On the one hand, you have the driver, who sits around 90% of the time, and on the other, you have the conductor who goes up and down the stairs all day to the tune of around 750 stairs. After analyzing these two groups, scientists found that the drivers were twice as likely to drop dead of a sudden heart attack or get congestive heart disease than the conductors. Now, even though it's been shown thousands of times that exercise benefits humans in so many ways, it's even known to help prevent 25 diseases. Exactly how it does what it does or what biological pathways or chemicals come into play is almost completely unknown to scientists. Like we know it's good for us, but we haven't been able to pin down exactly what's happening inside the human body that makes it good. In fact, a recent study biopsied people before and after 10 minutes of hard cycling and found thousands of changes of which only 10% were currently understood. Even the National Institutes of Health is running a five-year study to try and document every major molecule changed by exercise in 3,000 people. So what do we know that we could implement into pill form? Well, exercise is known to increase antioxidant production in your body. When our body breaks down oxygen, it can form reactive oxygen species, or RLSs, that can cause damage to our cells. But when we exercise, our body is able to increase the production and activity of antioxidant enzymes, such as glutathione and N-acetylcysteine, to protect against the stress RLS puts on our cells. So that would be useful in a pill. Catecholamines are also one of the most well-studied benefits of exercise. When you exercise, you release dopamine, adrenaline, and noradrenaline. Adrenaline initially increases blood pressure and heart rate when you exercise, but after you exercise, your blood pressure and heart rate have a new lower baseline. This is why athletes tend to have lower heart rates than the average person. Dopamine, when produced through exercise, reduces pain perception and reduces the release of the stress hormone cortisol. Another important known change is epigenetic modifications, which could be one of the most important factors in an exercise pill. Epigenetics is how your DNA is expressed. In other words, your DNA is the language that tells your body how to function, how you read the language is epigenetics. And studies in mice have even shown that epigenetic inheritance can occur when parental exercise benefits are passed on to their child. Scientists in Germany used a mouse model where mice were given either a high fat diet or a normal diet and were allowed to exercise while others were made to be sedentary. And they found that the children of mice that exercised had improved glucose metabolism regardless of their diet compared to mice parents that were sedentary. This is the path that many modern exercise and appeal drugs are taking. How can they turn on or off genes that lead to a beneficial outcome? The drug 516. So GW is a gene switcher. We, we all know that here. I do like that they featured that epigenetics play a role, meaning if two fat parents have a baby, that baby is sadly in the battle to get back to a normal metabolic rate has worse off implications of getting back in shape etc cetera, etc cetera. the drug 516 from earlier targets the gene ppar delta it binds to the receptor and boosts the signal to break down and burn fat and because mice are now burning fat instead of carbs they're able to run longer before feeling the physical sensation of exhaustion which results from using their glucose stores if the lance armstrong mouse was allowed to run it would be able to go one and a half hours longer than the couch potato mouse if it could run as well ironically even though scientists understand this is the mechanism of 516 they don't understand which molecule is naturally responsible for this process during exercise another drug called compound 14 being developed at the university of Southampton effectively tricks cells into thinking they are running out of energy, which triggers them to burn more fuel. A major discovery this year found that one of the most significant changes after exercise was the production of an amino acid called lactate. Lactate is made from lactate, the thing responsible for the burning sensation in your muscles when you work out. When lactate was given to mice with diet-induced obesity, it decreased their food intake by 50% without affecting their movement or energy expenditure, ultimately burning fat and reducing weight. Now, these are just a few of the many compounds and molecules being tested and explored to induce the benefits of exercise without the need to actually move. Though it may be increasingly obvious to you that it's extremely unlikely that any one drug will end up creating all these benefits. Now, some of you might be yelling, "Why not just exercise?" And I hear you. But despite the fact that simply telling somebody to exercise more or explaining the benefits of exercise doesn't actually increase activity, and the fact that a lot of 
people don't have the time or resources to afford a gym membership or equipment, there are a lot of other use cases for these kind of drugs. For example, people who are recovering from surgeries or the elderly who lose muscle mass at a rate of around 8% each decade after 45 and are often unable to exercise as much could take these pills. I'm not calling 45 year olds elderly, by the way, I'll be there soon enough. I'm just saying that's when a lot of muscle loss begins. Or even astronauts who lose a huge amount of muscle and bone density while in space and require physical therapy on their return, they could take an exercise pill for a short period of time. It's funny. <laughs> they're talking about Carter and Andrew, and then they're like showing like why SARM should be used in all these real life scenarios, but Carterine want to help at all. Like, I don't think that's accurate at all towards depiction of what GW does. But again, it's cool that a channel this big is showing off some research chem potential. As far as the mentions of how dangerous the gene switcher GW is in high enough dosages, I'm at seven minutes out of eight minutes and that's not even touched on. And that's, that's terrifying. You know, if I make a video like that, it could go real south for me if I don't talk about all the potential consequences. But there's a catch. There's always a catch, isn't there? It turns out that the drug 516, for instance, when given to mice in large doses, causes them to develop cancer way faster than ever. There, at seven minutes and 17 seconds, out of eight minutes and 17 seconds, a minute left, he's touching on potential horrible cancer escalation that has been shown in GW and why GW has been banned. Now, I've been back and forth on, do I think it's a myth that was used because like Andrew GW is such like a powerful performance enhancer that if you say like, if you do it in this dose, you're fine and everyone gets a benefit, everyone will take it. Still, I think people push the doses too hard and if they already had cancer in their system, you're just escalating it out of control. And overall, I just had a follower that fucked up their thyroid using GW because it seems to fuck around with metabolic rate, meaning if you abuse it for a year on end, like you're doing a daily supplement and you're not doing one to five mega day and you're doing 10 to 30 a day, you're really ramping up that gene switcher that would never naturally occur like that. We have no data on that shit. And this is being brought up at the last minute. I feel like this should be harped on at the front. Like you should be like, this is bad. 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 But hey, here's the potential benefits. And here's like the performance aspect. They did it opposite. They did it opposite. And they're a YouTube original contract channel. Other mice not given the drug. Any antioxidant production we talked about could have negative effects too, increasing the risk of heart disease, stroke, and lung cancer. Increased catecholamine production can increase blood pressure, causing palpitations, anxiety. It, it's like, um, it's like, please consult with your doctor before buying this opioid poison, Andrew. You can have this, 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 this. Like, what is this shit? I'm sorry. And chest pain. And a lot of these other drugs being studied in research also have their trade-offs. At least for now, while scientists continue to try and modify and adapt them in ways that could be less harmful. He like slid the cancer shit right under the rug. At the end of the day, if you're interested in the benefits of exercise- Like, that's the first DM I get is like, I'm worried about cancer. Like, the people who research it, I'm like, yeah, that is something to be hyper concerned about with this compound. Guys, you're probably best off just exercising. But that doesn't mean it's not an incredibly useful field of medicine that may have a huge impact on human quality of life in the future. Or one day we might have a pill, or many, many pills that we can take to confer the benefits of exercise with as little risk as possible. Until then, keep lifting, yeah. No, but honestly, just moving your body is an amazing thing. Even if it's just walking, the benefits are awesome. I'm curious what you think- Okay, I want to read these comments. It's well used in the bodybuilding community, usually sold under the SARM category, even though it's not a SARM. You can feel the endurance improvements right away. It feels like magic. I stopped using it as it felt too good to be safe. This guy's a smart cookie. It's also under the name Carter and they stopped most research because of an incident where it induced increased cancer growth in rats. So that one cycle, again, it's been heavily debated in the bodybuilding community. The one rat cycle they did, the experiment they did on Carterine showcased horrible tumor growth. Now you can concur that, hey, maybe the Olympics, Andrew, they saw all these people pop off for the same drug. They're like, they get their own little scientists to come up and sabotage the research so it stops and they use fear mongering to make it stop. That's what everyone thought at the beginning. When you start doing the calculations on the amount of MIG a person would have to ingest to facilitate the same conditions, at first we thought it was like above 50 MIG a day. Like, oh, I ain't never gonna take anywhere above 50 MIG a day. I'm good, I'm good. The more or I did the research and more followers that are higher education than me in biochem, they did the metabolic rate of a rat for me. They found it to be, I think, around 32 mig, which is really fucking close to where people are dosing it, which is 20 mig to 30 mig a day, right? So that is something to take into consideration with carterine. It's not very well researched what doing that gene switcher does for a long period of time. However, it's amazing for glucose regulation. It's amazing 
something to increase endurance to cause more fat burning. I'm on the side of caution and I'm, I'm the PED guru over here, right? I'm the wannabe PED guru according to the online community. But as far as what I think, I just think you should really err on the side of caution and that this video paints it out like it's all fairy tales. Trust me, we're about keeping it real over on this channel. You read into that cancer study, you start to do the calculations on, well, how much would that, like the rats took way more, how much would that equate to a human dosage? Oh, only around 30-ish mega a day? Well, in the bodybuilding community, everyone says do 10 to 40 a day. That puts you in the risk zone if you already have cancer. It is what it is. I do think it's awesome that a channel this big is featuring research chems. But when you leave a minute left for side effects may include this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and then the counteracting side effects of the benefits we stated, why do you get to make this video and other people can't even talk about it? I'm not fully against this video. I think it's cool that they reach a super mainstream audience to show that biohacking will be a thing of the future, even though it's here right now in the bodybuilding community, it's not out there and they're putting it more out there. I think doing a video on Carterine the way this one is done, I'm not a fan of straight up. I have no hate against the production quality of this video. I have no hate on the comparisons he made. He's simply not talking about the sheer danger to where it actually is. That's my two cents. It's cool. I like Greg for picking this video out. I feel like Greg was, you know, he nitpicked the video a bit. I watched Greg's video before I did my reaction. I'm not going to lie. Greg more picked out the, oh, like the 45% increase in exercise they claim in this video. That's a bunch of bullshit. Like Greg said, I just think it's a bunch of bullshit to just like, oh yeah, Andrew, after all these benefits, it, it might cause cancer. Well, you already watched the whole video. You're going to fucking look into it. It, like, I don't know. What am I? I just made a video roasting YK11, which is one of the most powerful new age steroids there are. And I could easily hype that to the moon. I choose to keep it based. So be careful what you see on the internet. Even from me, always get five different opinions and then draw your own conclusions. I'll see you guys in my next video.